Have you ever been to a place where time stands still? Where it seems that nothing has changed over the last 35 years and that people are kind of stuck in a place where they imagine the glory of something that used to be? Well, there is such a place and Tanya and I were there recently. Welcome to Transnistria. Transnistria is a self-declared independent country, which is actually still part of Moldova. It's a breakaway state, and it's located on this very narrow strip of land between the Dniester River and the Ukrainian-Moldovan border. It's not recognized by anybody. It's primarily Russian-speaking, and Russian heritage, uh, but Russia does not recognize it. The only two places where it is mostly recognized are two other breakaway republics, both in the country of Georgia, uh, Abkhazia, and South Ossetia. They have their own currency, the Transnistria ruble, <clears throat> which of course is not valid anywhere except in Transnistria. And if you go into a store in Transnistria, in primarily Tarasipol, which is the capital, you have to use Transnistrian rubles. And of course, then you take your Moldovan lei and, uh, and, and change that. And then you have to change it back when, when you leave because it's, it's, it's not worth anything in next door Moldova. They have their own passport, although that passport is only good for visa-free entry into Abkhazia and South Ossetia. So that's not really worth too much, uh, except that most Transnistrians have also Romanian or Moldovan passports. Some of them have uh, Russian passports and some have Ukrainian passports. They have their own government and, and their own passport control. So when you, we took a drive with a guide into Transnistria, so we're go, coming from Moldova across the border into Transnistria. There are border guards there. They took our American passports. They looked at them. <clears throat> they don't stamp them. They give you a little piece of paper that you then have to give back to them when you leave. And that's how that works. And there are these Russian peacekeepers, soldiers with their military vehicles that monitor and guard uh, the border. So that's, it's kind of interesting when you're, when you're going in there. What happened was, just a quick background on why this place even exists, is that when the Soviet Union fell apart in 1989-1990, um, Transnistria, this area, they did not want to be part of Moldova, which had been a previous Soviet state and then uh, broke away from the Soviet Union. So Moldova didn't like that, and so Moldova tried to enforce Transnistria to remain part of Moldova. The Soviets, or then at that point, then the Russian troops supported Transnistria against Moldova, and they had a, a war that went on for almost two years, and over a thousand people were killed with multiple injured as they're fighting about who was going to control this uh, this area. There are lots of memorials in Tarasipol <clears throat> memorializing this uh, roughly two-year war that went on. To say that Transnistria has a strong Russian or indeed Soviet affinity is an understatement. Their, I mean, the very fact that their currency is called the ruble. I mean, they, uh, they consider themselves Russian and Soviet symbolism is everywhere. There are statues of Lenin all over the place. And there are in particular two restaurants that we went to where you wouldn't know that you weren't back in the Soviet Union. You can enjoy uh, some nice borscht, a, a simple piece of chicken,
the Russian Orthodox Church is very prevalent in Tarasipol. And in 1999, they finished this brand new Orthodox Church, which, uh, which of course is quite beautiful. It's called the Church of the Nativity. The economy in Transnistria is pretty interesting. <clears throat> it's about 60% of the Transnistria economy is controlled by one guy, and his name is Victor Gushan. Victor Gushan is a former KGB officer, and he was known as the sheriff when he was a KGB guy. So all of his conglomerate in Transnistria is all under the label of sheriff, and it has a, a like a sheriff's badge as his, his logo. It was founded in 1993, coincidentally just shortly after the truce was declared when the Moldovans and the Transnistrians had their war. And Sheriff controls, he has a monopoly on almost everything. He owns uh, all the gas stations, so he has the, the, uh, the monopoly on oil. He has a publishing house, he has a supermarket chain, he has a TV channel, a publishing house, an ad agency, a Mercedes-Benz dealership. Uh, he owns a football club and the stadium and a five-star hotel to go along with it. He has a caviar farm. He has a, a distillery where they make cognac, which is an item that is frequently, I wouldn't say smuggled, but is taken back over across the Moldovan border by Moldovans visiting Transnistria to buy cheap cognac. The part of the economy that is not controlled by uh, Gushan uh, is, is the central market. Uh, and we took a tour through this market and uh, it, was, it was really fascinating. And it was really no different than any other uh, central market that you would go to in Europe. It had lots of, lots of goods and lots of things. So anyway, that is our very quick review of our trip to Transnistria. Uh, it is safe to go to. Don't worry about that. If you're going to Moldova for any reason, make sure you take a trip over to Transnistria. You know, you don't have to spend overnight, but you can go on a day trip and um, you, know, you won't have any problem at all. At least we didn't. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.